Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about rational inequalities. Before we proceed, all you need to know how to do is solve a rational equation. I've got a separate video on this topic if you'd like to look. A rational inequality is one that involves a rational expression. In other words, it's an inequality that's putting x's with integer powers in the denominator. Let's go ahead and jump right into an example. Let's solve 1 over x plus 2 is greater than or equal to negative 1. If this were a rational equation, we'd be able to multiply both sides by x plus 2 and cancel out and, you know, do the math. But with inequalities, we can't do that. See, multiplying by x plus 2 makes us lose a lot of information. So we have to be a little bit more crafty about how we handle this. This problem would be easier to solve if we had an expression greater than or equal to or less than or equal to 0. So let's try to make that happen. We'll make this happen by adding 1 to both sides, and then our 0 is going to show up. The right-hand side has to simplify a bit, so when we add the fractions, we get the revised equation x plus 3 over x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. Our next step is to find the roots and to find the holes in this inequality. Before I move forward, I want to make sure the steps I took were pretty clear. All I did was I took the inequality that I was given, and I moved some things around algebraically so that I have 0 on one side and my expression on the other side, which is exactly what I've done. Now I'll talk about what I mean by roots and by holes. So a root is a number that I plug into this expression that gives me exactly the number zero. In this context, a hole is what I'm calling a particular x value that forces the denominator to be equal to zero. The thing about holes is we need to avoid those completely because we can't divide by zero. So we need to avoid x values that force my denominator equal zero. So to find the roots, I take the numerator, x plus three, set it equal to 0, and then solve for x to find that x equals minus 3 is a root. Since the numerator is linear, there is only one root. To find the holes in this inequality, I take the denominator and set it equal to 0. When I do that, I find that the value x equals negative 2 will force my denominator to be 0, so now I'm going to indicate those points on the number line. So again, what did I just do here? I got my inequality so that I have 0 on one side and my expression on the other. I take my numerator, set it equal to 0, and solve to find my root. I take my denominator, set it equal to 0, and find that the point x equals negative 2 is one of these points of discontinuity. So I need to exclude it from a number line. Since I want this expression to be greater than or equal to 0, I'll go ahead and invoke the test point method. I'll pick my test points negative 4, negative 2.5, and 0, because they go around the holes and the roots that I have found. All these test point values will be plugged in to the expression that I have circled, x plus 3 over x plus 2. As I run through the calculations, I see that plugging in negative 4 gives me an answer of 1 half, which is greater than 0. If I plug in negative 2.5, I get negative 1, which is less than or equal to 0, so that's not what I want. And if I plug in 0, I get 3 over 2, which is greater than or equal to 0, which again is what I want. So I'll shade in the portions of the number line that put my expression greater than or equal to 0, which means that I'll do this around 3 and negative 2. Since 3 is a root, I look to the inequality that shows up in the problem to determine whether or not my circle will be shaded in or hollow. Since I have greater than or equal to here, I will fill the circle in. Now in regards to negative 2, no matter what the inequality says, I'm going to have that as an open circle. It's an open circle because plugging in negative 2 into this expression forces me to divide by 0, and I can't do that, so I have to avoid this point no matter what. Even still, it's an active benchmark for what my solution set is going to be. Therefore, when I read off the number line, I get the solution set of negative infinity to negative 3, close at 3, unioned with negative 2 to positive infinity, open at negative 2. Let's look at another example, and it'll be similar to the one that we just did. Consider the inequality x over x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. This looks like it's already in the form that I want because I have an expression on one side and 0 on the other. Now I can move on to the next step of this process, which is to find the roots and to find the holes of this problem. Looking at the denominator, if I set x plus 2 equal to 0, I get x equals to minus 2 which I know is a point I should avoid, because that point makes the denominator equal to 0, and that's bad. Setting the numerator equal to 0, I simply just get x equals 0, because if the numerator is 0, the whole thing zeroes out, and we're pretty much done. 
So I found both points of information that I need, so I can go ahead and plot them on the number line. Since 2 is a whole, I'm just going to put an open circle above it already because I know I'm not going to include it. But 0 is a root, and my inequality involves a greater than or equal to sign, so I'll shade that circle in because that point is going to be included in my solution set. Now that I've got my benchmark set up, I can go ahead and pick some test points. I'll pick negative 3, negative 1, and positive 1. Plugging in negative 3 into my rational expression gives me an answer of positive 3, which is greater than 0. Plugging in negative 1 gives me a negative 1, which is not greater than 0. And plugging in positive 1 gives me positive 1 third, which is greater than or equal to 0. Now that I know which portions of the number line give me positive numbers and which ones give me negative numbers, I know what portions of the number line that I want. I want the x values that are less than negative 2 and the x values that are greater than or equal to 0. So I can go ahead and shade those in. Finally, once I read this information off the number line, I get the interval negative infinity to negative 2 open at 2, union with 0 to infinity closed at 2. So again, the basic layout of this problem was I found the roots of the problem and I found the holes of the problem. I placed those points on the number lines to use them as benchmarks. I then select test points that go around in between those points. I plug those test points in and I see if I'm positive or negative. And then I let the inequality tell me which ones I care about. And then once I've found what portions of the number line I care about, I color them in and then I read off the interval to get my solution set. So really the more challenging part of this process is the bookkeeping. Let's do one last example. Solve the inequality, 0 is greater than or equal to 2x minus 4 over x squared plus 3x plus 2. First step, I'll find the roots, so I'll set the numerator equal to 0, giving me a solution of x equals to 2, and then to find the holes, I'll find the denominator, set it equal to 0, and then I find that the holes of this problem are x equals to negative 1 and x equals to negative 2. Now all I need to do is plot those numbers on the number line, and then I can go ahead and pick out my test values. So the only root is positive 2, and the holes are negative 2 and negative 1. So I select negative 3, negative 1.5, 0, and positive 3 as my test points. After some calculations that I did off screen, after plugging all this information into the rational equation that I'm given, I found that negative 3 gives me an answer of negative 5, which is good. Plugging in negative 1.5 gives me positive 28, which I don't want. Plugging in 0 gives me negative 2, which I want, but plugging in positive 3 gives me positive 1 tenth, which I don't want. The problem asks when the rational expression I'm given is negative, so when I plug in negative 3 and 0, my test points, I get negatives in return, which is what I want. But plugging in negative 1.5 and positive 3 give me positive values, so I don't want those. Now I can go ahead and fill in the portions of the number line that I care about. Since negative 2 and negative 1 are the holes, I put open circles over them. And since positive 2 is a root and the inequality involves a less than or equal to sign, I include it. So I shade in the circle, and now I can read off my solution and put it into an interval of negative infinity to negative 2, open at 2, unioned with negative 1 to positive 2, open at negative 1, and closed at 2.